So stop me if you've heard this one. You go to the big box advisor. That doesn't really work out, so you let them go. And then you go to the independent advisor, and you try them out, and, and that didn't really work out, so you let them go. And then you kind of go to the boutique advisor, and you try them out, and, and that didn't really work. So then you're like, you know what? I can just do this on my own. So you jump over into the world of do-it-yourself investing, and you go to a weekend workshop, and you try that out, but it just it doesn't stick, and you get hit with too many Mondays, and so you you look and you're like, you know, if I just knew what stock to buy, that you know, that's the thing. I I need to know just what stock to buy. It's about the ticker symbols, and then you enter the world of investment newsletters, which is the biggest portion of the do-it-yourself investors, and you go to them, and they rail. They rail against the big box and the independent and the boutique advisors. They say, no, they're, they're bad, but we're good. And you, you believe them because they're totally railing against you know, the, the big box and the independent and the boutique advisors. And you know, they hire the best writers, writers in the world. And they write such compelling stories about the stock picks they have each week, day, or month. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Every single one of those entities, whether they sit on the uh, advisor side or they sit on the do-it-yourself side, all of those entities or people or organizations, they all say the same thing. They all say that you, diverse, you, you should diversify. Like it's, it's, it's across the board. And you don't even, you don't even think to, to question this because after all, all of those entities are completely different especially comparing the do-it-yourself entities to the advisor entities. But even the do-it-yourself entities, the pick of the week, pick of the month newsletters and the weekend workshops, they tell you to diversify too. And yet it's this, this idea, this myth of diversification that's actually killing people's futures. And yet you can never see it because it's everywhere. And because every single person says, well, you know, of course you have to diversify that you don't even question it because they all say it. And this is one of the things that people up, are up against. But there's another thing that people are up against that I came across this past week. Not, not for the first time. I see them all the time. But, but this one really irked me, and, and I want to share it with you. And then after that, I want to show you <laughs> a very important set of four charts that, um, man, this one chart that I've been watching is... Um, it's kind of scary, actually, and so I want to share it with you because uh, I'm pretty sure most of you, if not all of you, have ever seen this chart before. Hey, everybody, this is R.C. Peck, and this is my weekend podcast. This is episode 331. Um, Bowen got strep throat this week. He did not give me strep throat, but I am I have a low-grade cold, which is not a big deal, but my voice may sound weird. So if it sounds like my voice sounds weird, it is because it actually does sound a little weird. So I came across this advertisement last week, and it's an advertisement from TD Ameritrade. So, you know, the advertisement itself didn't really bother me, but here's what really bothered me. So they have this picture of this woman, right? She looks like she's probably healthy in her early 60s. She's on some lake um, outside of Kenny Bunkport in Maine on her canoe wearing her Lululemon outfit. And, you know, geez, if I only had an app, if, if, if I only had an app to, to trade my stock positions, then my 60s and 70s and my 80s and my 90s, man, those would be really secure. And this is where it really kind of pissed me off. Clearly, TD Ameritrade is going after... Now, look, I, I don't care that they have a trading app, right? Everyone's got trading apps. But... They are clearly pushing this idea to people in their 60s. It could have been a man, but clearly they're going after the woman, possibly early retired or retired, and saying, you know what you, you, know what you need, Sylvia, that 63-year-old retired uh, teacher who slayed for 30 years with those snotty-nosed kids. Okay, maybe not all of them were snotty-nosed. You know, you know what you need now to go along with your canoe in October in Maine? You need a trading app. Because that's the thing your life's been missing. And this is where it's just total bullshit. And this is what hurts people because it's not just TD Ameritrade saying you've got to take more activity. you got to do more things. It's everyone. 
and no one no one does it. I mean, there's a competition between the pick of the month newsletter industry and the big box and independent boutique advisors. They're they're doing all of the complicated trading for you. And the pick of the month newsletters, they're they're saying, oh no, we got a new one this month for you. We got a new one for you. We got a new one for you. We got a new one for you. It's total bullshit. You don't need any of that. In fact, diversification is a complete myth. And I just, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired because they're all up to it. And TD Ameritrade is up to it too. Now look, TD Ameritrade, fine. Schwab, fine. You need to get your $7 trades. That's fine. You don't need a trading app. And I'm willing to bet you if some economist or sophomore in Berkeley did a study on people's accounts who have a trading app and people's accounts Oh, sorry, not accounts, but people's phones who don't have any trading app. I'm willing to put uh, $10,000, 100000 a million dollars at the people who have no trading app on their phone. The returns of their investments are noticeably, exceptionally, extraordinarily higher than the people who have trading apps. But it just, we get hit on all at all angles, at all times, in magazines and TVs, and you got to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself. More is actually more in the world of investing. Now, what is not more, <laughs> but is the perfect amount and the perfect dose, minimum dose for the maximum reward, is the next four charts I want to show you. And I think these are pretty powerful charts because they they tell a story that no one at least I've heard from all of my research, is telling. And so let me share it with you. This first price chart right here, which you'll probably not see anywhere else, is a comparison of two U.S. bonds, the 30-year and the 10-year yield. So this is what the 30-year is yielding in relationship to the 10-year. So stick with me on this. When the line goes higher, when the line goes higher, that means the yield is falling on the 10-year faster than the 30. So from 2000 to 2004, more people were putting money in the 10-year treasury bond than the 30-year in a noticeable way. And this line went up. And then people are like, well, you know, maybe things are okay. And they they backed away from putting money into the 10-year bond and they started putting into the 30-year bond. And then things kind of turned around and they said, no, I want to start putting more money into the 10-year bond. This is U.S. 10-year bond over the 30-year. Now, those three red circles back here in 2000, this is where the stock market peaked. This is where the S&P 500 peaked. Now, it actually had a triple top over those 10 months, but in March, it barely inked out um, where it peaked in October of the same year. But this is where the S&P 500 peaked after going up for 18 years. Fast forward to October of 2007. This is where the S&P 500 peaked again. And so far, where we are today, one year ago, the S&P 500 peaked right here. Now, my brain sees a bottoming pattern a topping pattern, a bottoming pattern, a topping pattern, and a bottoming pattern. Pattern, And here we are right now in the same thing, right? It bottomed here, and then it reversed, and it started moving up. Again, when it moves up, that means more money is flowing into the 10-year bond over the 30-year bond. Now, it doesn't really matter why people are putting more money into a 10-year over a 30-year, but the, the point is that over the last two decades, this is something that has proceeded with stock market tops. And here we are again. There is the most recent top in May of last year, one year ago. And notice this beautiful bottoming pattern. So now here's a price chart where I just I compare the, the relative difference between the 30-year and the 10-year yields. Okay, And I just show you a price chart of the S&P 500. And this price chart on the bottom is inflation protected or inflation adjusted, not protected, but inflation adjusted. And so the reason I wanted to do an inflation adjusted price chart, um, one of the reasons, so it's why are so many people feeling poor, even people in the top 5% of the country I said, oh, it's because if you look at the S&P 500 um, adjusted for inflation, you would get immediately why that top 5% 
or maybe not the top 2%, but you know, like from 98 or the, you know, the, the three percenters and the four percenters and the five percenters, why they're not necessarily feeling richer, even though they're putting money in the stock market. And this bottom price chart tells you because it hasn't gone anywhere based on inflation. So now, you know, is this just a coincidence that when the 30 year yield and the 10 year yield relative chart bottomed when the S&P topped, bottomed when the S&P topped, bottomed when the S&P topped. If in fact the third time is just like the second and the first, that is giving more weight of evidence that the S&P has topped out and will continue moving down. Now, if I zoom in, and I just wanted to zoom in on this, and for me, this is a gorgeous bottoming pattern. Like this bottoming pattern right here, it doesn't get much more beautiful than that. And I have just zoomed in on it right here. And this is a stunning bottoming pattern. This bottoming pattern, I won't say that phrase again, took three years to bottom. And it is a very solid bottoming pattern. I said it one more time. And it is breaking up into the, it's breaking out and up. And the last time, the last two times it did this, it preceded stock market tops. So if you're a bull or you have to have the stock market go higher, this is a problem. This chart poses a problem. Actually, I think it poses a pretty big problem. Now, this is the 10-year yield, which is the red line, being compared to the 30-year yield. And I just wanted to show you how the yield on the 10-year today is about 1.7%, and the yield on the 30-year is about 2.55%. So you can see that the red line, which represents the yield on the 10-year treasury, is accelerating faster to the downside. The yield is getting smaller and smaller on the 10-year bond, which means more money is flowing into it, or money is flowing into that 10-year faster than the 30-year. And you can see it right here doing that exact same bottoming pattern that I showed you here. That's what I'm showing you right here. So it's accelerating to the down, downward, downward area. The path of least resistance for the 10-year yield, which is accelerating, is to the downward side. And again, this has preceded the last two major stock market corrections. So the question is, what is the takeaway? Well, money is getting scared again. And it's getting scared again because we see more money flowing into certain and specific assets, right? And the, the reason we know that money is getting scared again is because I can see that people are increasing their concern about the future. And the reason I know that, and it's not so much an opinion, but um, what's actually happening is because bonds, the price of bonds are continuing to go higher and the price of metal is continuing to go higher. And there is only one reason why the price of metal, gold and silver, goes higher. And that is because the change of concern of their future, of an investor's future, they're, they're thinking, I'm a, I'm a little bit more concerned about the next 12 months. I'm just going to put a little bit more money in bonds and metal. And it's bad for stocks. And unfortunately for all those pension funds out there that hire... Uh, thousands or tens of thousands of uh, very expensive consultants, um, I think there's going to be some very strong headwinds coming their way where what they think the stock market is going to do for them is, again, the third time over, not going to do it for you. Now, the way that we've approached this or I've approached this is that I have my clients, um, people in my membership, by strategies and not ticker symbols. The strategies tell you what to do. And in fact, one of my most recent strat, one of my main strategies, I have two main ones, um, just gave us a signal. And so the channel, the price channel continues for the S&P 500 while bonds and metal continue going higher. Hey everybody, this is just another step in helping you protect your portfolio and protect your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck. 
Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for being in my world and being on this podcast. I appreciate that. And you know, it's really interesting. If someone were to get sick, they would probably get a second opinion, especially if it was something like cancer or some other disease or something that is not as well known or maybe is just a serious threat to health. And yet I often find people don't get second opinions with their portfolios, whether they have a big box advisor or an independent advisor or a boutique advisor, or if they jumped over into the do-it-yourself world with weekend workshops and investment newsletters. And it's that second opinion, sometimes people even get two second opinions, that gives the overall point of view, it clarifies that point of view of what might be best for their health, especially if all three doctors are saying the same thing or if they all say something different. And so one thing I just want to drop into your brain is one of the things that people often come to me to is for a second opinion on their portfolio, to sit down with me and look over their portfolio. It's just their money, their behaviors on the table, metaphorically speaking, and me pointing out to them, well, this is these are the behaviors that I think are hurting your future and your portfolio, and these are the specific ticker symbols that I think are hurting. But even most important, this strategy that you're using, and for most people, the strategy is an unconscious strategy. And so for some of you, you're going to want to have a second opinion, and parts of you might already be no- noticing that. And if you do, it's super, super easy. Just go ahead and email Patty at Fearless Wealth and get that set up and you can have that second opinion. Thank you so much for being in my world. I will speak with you guys soon. Okay, bye.